I'm Dan Jones, mobile editor of uh, Low Reading. Uh, I'm here with David Orloff from the Small Cell Forum, uh, chairman of the Small Cell Forum. Uh, and it's been a, a kind of exciting year for 5G and small cells here in Barcelona. Um, first off, you announced uh, some new, new specifications this week, some new st standards this week, uh, the FAPI standard. Could yeah. you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure, Dan. So, I mean, the, the small cell forums really focus on laying the foundation for 5G, uh, removing the barriers to uh, small cell deployment. Um, as part of that, we've been working on the new uh, femtocell API protocol uh, that allows uh, the chipsets to be embedded with the API uh, to improve communications up through the stacks uh, across the end-to-end -end network. Um, as part of that, we've also released uh, the NFAPI protocol, Network Femtocell API protocol. Um, and what that really focuses on is uh, open source, uh, open front hall uh, for the in-building environment uh, where, so that we can, again, uh, balance the cost as well as uh, with getting this, the, the throughput that we need for these systems. Right, and uh, kind of indoor 5G seems to be quite a hot topic. Oh yeah, there's there's a lot of focus. I mean, we uh, we we see the enterprise environment uh, uh, leading the way for for the 5G deployments. Uh, there's still a lot of untapped uh, uh, population out there from the enterprise space, uh, and what we really are are looking towards is private LTE networks, uh, shared uh, operator networks, uh, or or yeah, shared networks, operator shared networks. Uh, to allow for uh, the business models, the ownership models, uh, to be effective and uh, with, with monetizable value to the enterprise as well as the operator. Now this seems to me to be kind of a, a debutant year for, for 5G small cells, but there's still a lot of work to be done by the looks of things. What, you, what would you see as some of the key factors in, in pushing 5G small cells forward? Yeah, so I mean, what we're really looking at is, is uh, 5G is all about enhanced mobile broadband, reduced latency, and massive connections. Um, and so we see the services uh, with, you know, that the customers need being uh, all balanced around those three characteristics. Uh, and so as part of that, uh, the, as a, you know, from the massive connection perspective, uh, we're looking at, at IoT. Um, and where we see applications of IoT that are healthcare related, uh, retail, uh, could be offshore, uh, uh, et cetera, with industrial, um, that really add value to the, the connections. You know, driverless uh, vehicle or connected car, uh, another one. Um, in addition, uh, edge computing, uh, we've been doing quite a bit with edge computing that, that really allows for advanced services that are customized to the uh, enterprise as well as the customer uh, for specific services. Uh, again, uh, monetizable by both sides, you know, right. for, for value. And uh, when would you expect some of this kind of, this kind of indoor and maybe street hardware to, when will we be able to see it? The current technologies really play into both LTE and 5G. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing 5G, you know, millimeter wave systems come out uh, now. I mean, they're actually in the outdoor space. Oh, wow. uh, in the indoor space, we are seeing NR uh, uh, systems uh, come in 2019. Right. We, we're seeing, we, we're expecting a large increase in deployments uh, that continues on the exponential growth that we're seeing so far in the industry. That's great. Thanks very much for your time. Great. Thanks, Dan.